All right, so you've probably seen in the example um, how you know how many frames you have and the interval between them can really affect um, not only all the code you have to write, but how smooth the image is overall. Um, and uh, you might want to be able to play with that independently. It's nice if we have some sort of variable that we can just change. That's the smoothness, and if we change it, that's the only thing we have to change. So here I have that same example um, from uh, the exercise. I'm doing some imports. Um, I'm creating my plot area. I have the circle and the rectangle. And, and then you can see that ball is falling from the top to the bottom of the screen. And, uh, and I have lots of parameters in here. Right? I have like these number of frames, the interval. And so I think what's helpful is to start off with some uh, variables that describe your animation. And, um, and some of those variables, maybe I will write them here. One is just like, well, how, uh, how long is the video? Maybe I'll call that video seconds. And uh, we can say, well, I want this video to be two seconds long. And then the other variable that you probably wanted to find up front is something called uh, FPS. And that will be something, uh, it means frames per second. So, you know, in one second of video, how many frames do I draw? So, so if I say something like five here, I guess I would have 10 frames total because I have two seconds of video and five frames per second. And uh, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna figure out how to compute all of these things based on that. And, uh, and also the position, right? I wanna figure out the position based on that. So I'm just gonna make a note here, I have to make some changes. So well, how many frames are there? I think that's the easiest thing. I can just multiply the video seconds by, by the frames per second. Um, the interval is a little bit trickier, isn't it? Right, so I, I kind of have um, FPS is uh, frames divided by seconds, right? So if I wanted to get an interval, I, I guess I'd kind of have something like that, one divided by frames per second. I, I guess that really kind of, what I'm trying to say is that like seconds over frames is the interval and, and so the way I would get that is one over FPS. And so this is frames per second, which is pretty, or I, I'm sorry, this is seconds per frame, right? So how many seconds do I have between each frame? Which is pretty close, but I, I, this needs to be in milliseconds, right? So this is in seconds, I need milliseconds. So I re should really say something like a thousand times that. And, uh, and of course I can simplify this. So. So I can say a thousand over FPS to get it in, in terms of um, you know how many milliseconds are there between each frame, All right? So I have these two things based on my more fundamental variables up here now. How do I actually do my drawing? I think um, what we want to get away from is thinking too carefully about the frame number because you know maybe before well right now i have like 10 frames maybe some later somebody wants to increase the the kind of like the smoothness of the video and now instead of having 10 frames maybe i have like 100 frames and uh, it's so it's more useful to be able to think in terms of like well what percentage of the way is the video done and this will be between zero and one how how much of the video is done and and so what i can do down here is if i figure out how to write that i can say well I want to draw that circle that's dropping and it starts at the top which is one and so i can just say well minus percent right so you know it starts at one when my percent is zero and at the end of the video well this will be zero and it will be to the bottom well how do i get this percentage well that's pretty easy i can just divide my frame number i'm currently on by I don't know, however many frames there are. So maybe what I should do is I know how many frames there are here. So I'm going to cut this and put it in a variable because I need it in, in more than one place. Whenever you need uh, some expression in more than one place, good idea to put in a variable um, to make sure you're consistent with yourself. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to divide by my frame count here. Okay, so this is what portion of the way I'm done. And I can base everything else off on this. Like this should be the only place I refer to frame name uh, uh, within this function. I'm going to draw that, and uh, and it still works fine. So that's good. I haven't broken anything. And um, now I can change these other things, right? If I want to, um, if I want to make it better resolution, right? I can I can change this. 
And, and notice before when I only had a few frames, it was pretty fast to generate the video. Uh, now it's going to take longer to generate the video, right? That was about three times longer. But now it's much smoother, and, 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 and kind of that's the trade-off. And, and so one of the advantages of having this like this is what you'll usually want to do is have something uh, small and kind of rough when you're debugging to make sure it looks right. And then when you're all done, maybe make it look like really nice. I can have like 40 frames per second before I kind of share out the video with other people. Now that's a, that's a great video, right? It took a while to generate, but that's fine. Um, okay, so this is good. Another debugging tip I want to give before I wrap up is that it's often helpful to be able to draw an individual frame and think about how it looks and kind of just debug one frame at a time instead of dealing with the whole animation. And, and so what I'll usually like to do is I'll have something like this. I'll have to say something like debug frame equals, uh, you know, let's debug frame um, 25. And uh, none means uh, make an animation instead of debugging. Right, so so kind of the idea here is I'm going to say, you know, if debug frame equals none, well, then I'm going to do all my usual stuff. Oops, excuse me. So if I'm not debugging, I do all the stuff I have been doing. Um, otherwise, right, if I have some sort of debug frame number, um, I just want to make a call to my um, uh, to my draw frame, right? So in this case, I just say draw frame and whatever debug frame that is. So I, I can do that, and you can see how instantaneous it is, right? I can do that, oh, that's 50, that's 60, um, and so that's straight. When I put it back to none, I should be looking at the animation. And um, the, the one difficulty here, right, is that this is not at the end of my, of end of my video, right? So I have to deal with that somehow. Um, there's different ways I could do it. One way I could do it is um, from when I'm importing HTML from this display, I could import the display function also from the display module. And this basically works like a print. So if I wanted to, I could, you know, I can't quite print HTML, but I can display HTML. And uh, since this is like a print, this is not going to go to the outbox, right? You can see like before I was getting um, animations in the outbox. That's not going to do that. But for my purposes, it doesn't really matter. Um, I just want to see, uh, I just want to see it somewhere. Right, I can still save it and watch it and everything I need to do. I don't have an outbox, but who cares, right? So this is kind of a good way to set up if you want to be uh, debugging these things, right? What you don't want to get in the habit of doing is having something where every time you try to make a code change as part of your debugging, you have to like wait like a minute to see if it works, right? That's kind of slow. So do things like this. Make it sure you can just try to make these small changes um, so you can debug quickly and then kind of make it polished at the very end. And make it like this so you can debug one aspect of it without having to watch the whole animation from beginning to end.